We are seeing a female laying eggs on my milkweed right now. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. Hello, I'm Rich Lund, just a guy trying to help out some monarchs, and I've got some hungry mouths to feed. I currently have 22 caterpillars of various instar stages going through my process, and some of those stages are the very hungry ones. And I don't wish to decimate my recently started home stock of milkweed, so I need to go out and get some. So here's the plan. Let's go check out some urban milkweed spots, get some fresh milkweed leaves, rescue any eggs or caterpillars that may be doomed along the way, and then when we get back, we'll show how I'm cleaning the leaves and eggs, what my current process is these days. Here we go. Now, I don't know if you recognize this area, but this was in an uh, episode last year. And uh, it's one of the first places I found some urban milkweed. But also last year, shortly after filming that episode, all this milkweed was torn out. Um, before the Woodward Dream Cruise, pretty famous thing here in Detroit, it may be torn out again. Not really sure. But I'm going to collect some, some leaves from here and see, see what else we might find. Easily worth pointing out, too. Something I'm finding when it comes to urban milkweed, there's a lot more aphids, pests, predators. Really like the aphids especially are just all over the place. Just in an urban setting, you've got a higher concentration of people. you got more traffic, more comings and goings, more food truck deliveries, more family visits from out of town. You do wind up with pests. Parasites just in a higher density. We're able to move around more. Even if the milkweed isn't in high density, the pests of it, they've got more access to it. I'm finding I'm finding aphids, but I'm not finding eggs. Still, I'm here for the leaves anyway. Ew. This one, this plant here might take the cake for just the worst I've ever seen it. There's aphids just all over this thing. Oh. All right, now here, I think we, we're lucky here. And there he is right there. He was just eating over there. Let's rescue this guy. All right, buddy, you're coming with me. I can't claim to have checked them all, but uh, no eggs found on these adult plants other than that one cat. And I checked a few. Seemingly abandoned uh, fast food joint. And it's got some milkweed. Let's see what kind of action we got going on here. Well, so far, more aphids. And a very lazy ladybug that is not really doing its job because they're supposed to eat the aphids. So, get to it. Some ladybug eggs, but no monarch eggs. Not on any of these guys. But. They got some pretty big leaves. I ain't complaining. Fresh eats. Nummy nums. More aphids. And we do have though right here, checking some more of these plants, we do have a cat. Nice little guy here surviving. But we're gonna still take him out of this aphid mess because the aphids are prolific here too. They're like really bad back here. So, all right guy. We gotcha. Still at that abandoned fast food joint just around the corner. They've got some other little milkweed sprouts. Check out what I found over here. Here's two fit star caterpillars doing fine. So that's pretty awesome. They must have walked over here from someplace else because I don't see a lot of milkweed eaten here. Nor evidence of their frass. So cool. They get around. I'm gonna leave these guys be. I think they're doing fine without me. All right, onward. All right, last stop. I kind of got enough leaves, but saw these guys and haven't really perused them before. Oh yeah, I'll skip to the good news. We got an egg right here. Not sure if it's necessarily doomed here, but we're gonna make sure it makes it all the way. 
All right, back at the homestead, and here is the one egg that we found there at the end. Do you see those little black dots on the egg? Those are OE spores. So, like, you know, not a lucky find as far as this guy, or, or maybe lucky find for him in the sense that we're gonna we're going to sanitize this egg. We're gonna get rid of those OE spores, prevent the parasite from ever infecting him, and yeah. We're going to show you also just how we bleach treat these leaves. Cool. Good for this guy. I mean, not good to have them, but good that I found them. Looks like the spores are in clusters. Just on the scrim of the egg there, just on the edges. Several different heights on the eggs, so they're all not in the same focus. But they're there. There's the OE parasite, sitting in the dormant spores, waiting for the caterpillar to hatch out, eat the eggshell, and thus eat the spores and internalize them. And the parasite's circle of life continues. So yeah, time to bleach treat. What I have here is what I was going to be using to treat all of the leaves anyway. This is my 5% bleach solution that I've shown how to make in a few different videos. You can check the links in the description below to see some full details on how to make the solution. But also it's good to clear up some questions that have come along the way often enough. To make this bleach solution, what kind of bleach exactly am I using? Now I'm not looking to try to promote any brand or do any endorsement like that. Instead though, yes for your bleach, typically what we're looking at is sodium hypochlorite. That concentration is really what makes bleach, most bleaches, do what they do. The concentration I used in my original videos and the concentration I'm using right now for this one originally is a 7.5% sodium hypochlorite solution. And there's others, most commonly some that are like 5.5% or even 5% sodium hypochlorite solutions that are bleach, straight bleach out there. And if you start with even those lower concentrations, you're still in an effective window when you get to your final mixed up solution. So anywhere in that normal range, 5% up to 7.5% sodium hypochlorite is a good bleach solution concentration to start off with. But that's what we would define then as our straight bleach. So really, when I'm saying my 5% solution, that's 5% of the 7.5% sodium hypochlorite solution. There's actually a pretty low concentration of sodium hypochlorite in this because, hey, it needs to be pretty low. It's very effective. This time around, I'm using a 2 liter, and for my metric friends, this one is easy. We want 100 milliliters in our 2 liter bottle, and then that'll give us then room for 1,900 milliliters of water, giving us a full 2,000 milliliters, or 2 liters, of solution. And it'll be 5% of the stock solution. Now, I don't know that I need to use all of this for my leaves, but even if I did, that's pretty affordable. Very little bleach was used for this. Now, normally when I am bleach treating my eggs, I'll have already cut out the square. But in this case, since it's only one of them, I'm just going to go ahead and submerge it and I'll be bleach treating the rest of the leads with just to clean them anyway. So I'm going to expose the egg here to the bleach solution for one minute, and then I'm going to rinse it for at least one minute, though certainly you can go over. So it's now submerged. There's a plane going by. And again, we're doing this to sanitize the leaf from several things. Bacteria that could be on there that could cause bacterial infection. Um, the NPV virus, which I do understand saying virus there is kind of redundant. And then of course also the OE parasite, which we already saw there's evidence of on this egg. We're at a full minute. Taking that out and now directly into the water. But it's just kind of easier to see where the egg is at with it partially cut and then I'm just kind of wobbling it around here a little bit to rinse it make sure that it thoroughly gets rinsed off from that bleach at least a minute of rinsing though certainly no harm in going two minutes the only risk here is you don't want the egg to fall off and have to lose it here in this water and so for that reason I usually will do it just one little piece at a time in a smaller amount of water but since I'm doing just one egg no harm in making sure to rinse it this way now. We're at about two minutes actually, so you can easily take it out and let's try to dry this off a little bit and then we'll see what it looks like under the microscope. Now while we let that one dry, 
I'm going to go ahead and treat these other leaves that are looking pretty, uh, pretty sticky. And they do have aphids on here too. And the bleach is going to take care of them as well. I'm going to go ahead and do a full minute of exposure again. I don't want to go, just as I've said before in other videos, I don't want to go too much past that full minute. Because I don't want any of the bleach solution to start to leach in to the piece of the plant here, stem of the leaf, where I originally pulled from it. I don't want bleach to start to leach into there and become part of the plant material and something that the caterpillars eat. Put them in there kind of separated so we can dissolve all of that sugar that's on there. So that way all the aphids get some exposure. They're not going to like that. And again, you can go a little bit over past the one minute. They need at least one minute of exposure for this. You can go past that one minute. I'm also working my fingers here to hopefully get the aphids off of the leaves, living or dead. Okay, that's been a minute. Let's pull them out. Go right in directly into the water. I'll just put them in there all at once, too. I want to separate them. Make sure that two leaves aren't like lodged together like this, so that way they thoroughly get rinsed on both sides. If I have a lot of leaves that I might be doing, I might want to rinse these guys off again in some fresh, more fresh water. You're pretty safe here already. I mean, this is a five gallon bucket. You don't really have any significant amount of bleach on them. But I like to give my monarchs the absolute best, right? We all do. So why not? Hence the other bucket. And I'm going to go in here too. So again, optional, but I do it. And again, if I was doing a lot of leaves, maybe this is more something to think about because as you rinse your bleach solution, this is building up a little bit of bleach solution. And just for the best sake, you know, if I was doing like 50 leaves, maybe I want to make sure I definitely do this double bucket method. And after this, really, you can just kind of let them sit there and soak. It's not drastic that I pull them out right yet, but I'm going to get them out and dry them off. A couple of aphids still on the leaves, but... Uh... Nothing that's moving or living, and most of them are off anyway. Yeah, here's where all the aphids are. <laughs> They're in the bleach solution. Floating dead at the top. All right, while those dry, let's check out the results of our egg. All right, we're looking at the same egg. And though it has been bleach treated, I'm learning something new here. The spores seem to still be on the egg. Like visibly, as I go through the focus, and see all the clumps that I saw before, they're all still on there. You can see them too. However, I know from bleach treating that this is effective. So here's really an advantageous situation. The egg is known to have spores on it. It's been bleach treated. So even though the spores are still on there, it should mean that those spores are no longer effective. So I'm going to isolate this egg. We're going to rear this one separately. There's going to be another episode to just ensure that this bleach treatment works and that this monarch comes out as an adult OE free. It should be eating some dead spores there that can't reproduce. We'll test it out and see. It's an experiment. I just hope, of course, nothing else goes wrong because things can and the adult makes it. We shall find out. And now we can also take a look at our milkweed, which is dried now for the most part. And how do we do? I mean, still evidence that aphids were getting this guy, but no aphids are on there. The sugary sap is gone. These leaves are looking good. And since these paper towels were used to just kind of dry them off, as per usual, I can use portions of them to wrap up the base here of my leaves to keep them moist. They now have some fresh eats, all they could desire. And I've got a good number to put in the fridge and keep fresh. I don't know guys, was it just me or this episode have a lot? Had it all. From females laying eggs at the intro, to checking out some gnarly aphids, foraging some leaves, rescuing two cats and an egg, checking out some OE spores, bleach treating, how to make the solution, and we got a chance at a new experiment here and test something out. I don't know how you feel, but let's icing this cake. Let's end the episode with a release. I'm Rich Lund. Thanks for coming along with me on this urban egg and milkweed sourcing hunt. 
And as always, thank you for your conservation efforts in trying to help out the monarch butterfly. I'll see you next time.